And then over here, some other commands that you might need to know about. Um, if you were to go into interface mode, so here you see I'm in global config mode, and then I put in interface serial 000, and that puts me into interface mode, and then I can put a summary, I can manually put a summary address on my interface and attach it to the eIGER process even from interface configuration mode. So this is the command that would do that. IP summary dash address eIGRP1, the eIGRP uh, routing protocol and the process ID, and then the um, summary address that you want to use and the summary subnet mask that you're going to use. Okay, so that's a manual summary address configuration. And then another thing that um, dual needs that the eIGRP algorithm needs to uh, run correctly is you need to configure bandwidth on your different interfaces. So here you see I've also gone into interface serial 000 and then you put in bandwidth 64 and that's going to be uh, 64k, 64 kilobits uh, bandwidth setting. So that dual can um, calculate the metrics to the destination networks um, correctly. Okay, the administrative distance um, for eIGRP is for an internal route is a 90 an external route is a 170 and then a summary route if you have an EI group summary route that gets a 5 um, and as an administrative distance okay so here I've got some basic um, EI group configuration commands you can see here I uh, got a screen grab from a uh, config and I've got it up here I've got my EI group command my network commands no auto summary I've also got the bandwidth and another bandwidth command here Okay, and then we can examine the routing table. If you look at the routing table here, you can see that if you see a D on the left hand side, that means EI group. A C stands for a connected route. So you see here that we've got some connected routes, and then we've also got some routes with Ds that we've learned about from EI group. And you can see here the parent routes are uh, here, and the child routes are indented. Um, so we look at this one, we see here that. Uh, this parent route says it's variably subnetted, two subnets, two masks, and then we've got two child routes. The first one here is a summary route to the null zero interface. And um, this is important. This can cause some problems. Um, the null, uh, the summary route to the null interface will mean in this case that after looking through the routing table for a route to a child network, if it doesn't find a child network, it won't continue on and look for a default route or a static route. Um, so it's important that we um, turn off auto summarization to bypass this situation. Um, and let's see here, we've got some other, uh, another summary route to a null zero network. You can see here I've put an explanation here down to that. And then um, some child routes here. You can see here that this, um, in brackets here, this 90 is the administrative distance for EIGRP, and then this number, uh, 2,172,416, that is the calculated metric by dual to the destination network. The lower number being um, better. So, uh, so anyway, that's something that shows you a little bit of the routing table. Um, if you were to put in a uh, default static route and then put a redistribute static command, which would distribute that route, it would look something like this. You hear D for EI group, and then an asterisk for a default route, and then EX, it's labeled as an external route, so, and it's to the 000 network, and you can see here it gets an administrative distance of 170, and then here's the metric over here via the next hop router's interface and out of serial zero. All right. Um, another important command that you want to know how to do for the test is a show command, show IP EI group topology. This is important and will probably be on the test because it lets you know, when you, when you put in this command, it lets you know all of your EI group um, successor and feasible successor routes. And you can see here if it's a P, that means this is a successor route. It's a P, it's passive, meaning it's a good route. The route is in place and it's fine. If it's an A or an active, that means that EI group is actively searching for a new route and uh, dual is computing. So we've got here the 10.1.1.0 network is a successor route and it has a feasible distance is and it tells you the feasible distance right here and, and it tells you here connected via this this address. Um, when you have these two numbers here 
uh, inside of parentheses, the first number is the feasible distance and the second number is the reported distance. So my guess is, like on this one, we've got a feasible distance number. That's my distance to this network, uh, EI group distance. And then the zero means that uh, reported distance is zero, meaning I probably uh, learned about this route on a connected interface since there's no reported distance. So it's probably a connected route. Uh, down here at the bottom, I've put in some configuration commands if you wanted to set up maybe uh, unequal cost load balancing and how you would set that up. Well, I hope this was helpful, and um, in the next video, I'm going to show a little bit more about uh, looking at EI group using Packet Tracer.